to the webinar, another free Friday webinar. I'm your hostess, Shelly Sanchez Terrell, and I'm here every Friday thanks to American TESOL. You get a free certificate for attending. You can even watch the video recording, which they're all on YouTube. We have over 200. Um, you can also access all the bookmarks, and you get a certificate of attendance from American TESOL. So it's a great way to learn and then also um, get this on your e-portfolio. Um, today we're going to learn about something called digital badges. And in the summer, now it's kind of summer for a lot of teachers, are any of you in the chat box, um, are you off for the summer or are you teaching in the summer or are you teaching summer camp? You can write that down. And if you can let us know where you're from, Alexandra is in Portugal, so it's always nice to have a worldwide audience. I enjoy it. <laughs> um, if you look at this picture, what do you, where do you think this vest comes from here? I love this picture. I think it's so funny. <laughs> Okay, I, I see Alexandra and Lori writing, so I think that they have an idea. Okay, no, no problem, Alexandra. <laughs> but you may recognize this vest. It, it's from a very, very famous organization. Okay, from Oregon and off in the summer. It's the Girl Scout. <laughs> So you can see it says Girl Scout Troopers there. And the reason I want to use this is because a lot of times teachers think that badges are used to give us reward, but that's not necessarily true. So we're going to study the culture of badges and see why they can really get our students of any age, even adults, even us, to be motivated to learn or accomplish a task. So I really like this quote, and this is actually a student. This is a student who has received from George Bush, the president, at the, he was the president at the time in this picture, um, an award for volunteering. And it says, I really love what John F. Kennedy says. He says, um, nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also the men it honors. So badges, when you think of a badges, a badge is much like, it has its roots within the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, the Eagle Scouts, even in the military where you get all of these kind of patches or you get these emblems um, and that's what they kind of look like. But it's a way not of just motivating or rewarding, but it's more of a celebration. So I want you to think of it that way. And celebrating is part of our culture. It is what's very motivating. Um, and it's great to be able to motivate our students and recognize them. And one of the reasons why is because our, it's not rewarding them for doing things. It's saying, hey, I recognize that you are very good at this or you accomplished it. And I want to say congratulations because too many times in school, we will mark them, we'll give them like a, um, a D or a C or an F or a low uh, score, like maybe a 60 or 70. And we'll do that easily, but we don't necessarily always, um, we don't celebrate different types of achievements. So badges, you can use badges to celebrate different achievements. One of the first ways that I learned about badges was through my father. When I was a little girl, my dad was a championship bowler. And so he had many patches. Oh, my sisters and I loved his patches. And so he would get patches for a lot of different things. How many of you have gotten patches before? Um, and if you have, then where, where have you gotten a patch or maybe a pin? Maybe you've gotten something like a pin here. So within our culture, we often get pins. Or here at a conference, they have flair. Sometimes they call it flair. Um, and then in here, in karate, they have belts. So all of these are ways of honoring. They, they're showing for here, example, that this person was in this tournament. 
over here they say that this person um, actually bowled the five in the 500 series, okay? Um, here he was the president of the bowling league. Here he got an honor award. Here he was a achievement award, a league champion. So if you think of patches for now, they can symbolize a lot of different things. Here, when a teacher gets one at a conference, and a lot of conferences are using patches and um, and more, more like stickers like this, you have to visit a booth. So they motivate you to go visit vendors, to go accomplish a task. I was recently in iPad Palooza. And they had to do different types of tasks to receive um, different types of badges. Um, and in here, in the military, we use pins as a ranking. Um, and it's not, uh, when they receive a pin, it doesn't mean that they necessarily um, won something. In fact, it's not a reward mostly, but what it symbolizes, and if you think of the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, that's where that's one of the most famous examples of badges in real life, okay? So I want you to think of that as a metaphor for the digital badges. So um, what, when you're in a Boy Scout or when you're a Girl Scout, a badge um, or a patch, you know, badge will symbolize a skill. So in other words, if you know how to, for example, tie a specific knot, then you'll, you can get a, a badge for that, okay? Um, it, it also symbolizes sometimes a rank, okay? So it may tell someone that, for example, I'm a level two um, or I am um, the leader, okay? So it, it can say a different, where you rank in your position. So for, um, for a boy, there might be an Eagle Scout, okay? So they may have a badge for that. It also says you're experienced. Um, and, and in other words, where you, like we saw with the bowling, what kind of tournaments you went in, uh, what you participated in. So it's not necessarily your, it, it can be your experience of you doing things, but it's also an experience of the events you attended. So for example, if you were in ISTE, or if you went to the um, ELTA, com um, the IATEFL conference, or any conference like that, you may get a badge. And then that symbolizes that, hey, that's where I was. It also can mark citizenship. So as far as Boy Scouts and uh, Girl Scouts are concerned, if you do a nice, um, kind act, a lot of times you'll get um, a citizenship badge for different things, helping someone, tutoring. And I think those are some of the best kinds of badges. And teachers are using badges, digital badges, to symbolize citizenship, I think that's awesome because it's a really great way of getting our students to do kind things. Oh, I think that's so important. Um, it also marks achievement, but it's it's not it's accomplishing a task, and it's also marking doing good in the task. The difference between rewards and also awards and badges is when a badge someone can always achieve. So it's not only limited to the smartest people, such as an A. An A, you have to, um, there are certain specific requirements to get an A. But with the badge, it's different because with the badge, you're able to, anyone can achieve that badge if they just work hard and they do it. So already there's a motivation there because everyone feels that as long as they do the work, they can achieve that badge. Um, it also symbolizes a membership. So, for example, if you had a, here in America, we have what's called Letterman jackets. And it, you only get a Letterman jacket if you're on the, on the varsity team. So it can show, like, people are in the same membership. Um, it can also show, for example, what division of uh, Boy Scouts you're from or Girl Scouts. Um, and then it also shows a victory. It can show, like, um, something that you want. So one of the best resources about this is EducatorOwl.com. And um, Educator Al, he's Alfonso Gonzalez. And the great thing about Alfonso Gonzalez is he has um, a lot of resources, and he really um, asked the question. I think it's a good one. 
um, whether badges are for rewarding. And I think a lot of teachers I talk with have this misconception. Yes, it can be an award, but if you do it correctly, and we're going to see how you can use it, um, then it doesn't necessarily work that way. You can make it to be something that is very, very motivational. And you can get your students to accomplish things. And you can also celebrate their individual achievements. So what that means is, for example, Molly might always get A's, and Molly might be one of your best students, okay? So Molly is used to getting lots of different types of rewards. So in other words, she might get, like, an award, at an award ceremony, a lot of certificates. But with a badge, Johnny, who, who maybe never has gotten an award or a certificate because he's always late or he doesn't do well in school, then he can get a badge for maybe perhaps for maybe he stuck up to a bully. You could give a badge for that. If he's if he shows up to class every single, um, uh, if he shows up and has great attendance, you can give him one for that. If he if he be, if he accomplishes a task like an assignment, you can give him a badge for that. So I think that they're better than rewards. I, and, and I think with a reward, a lot of times one of the kids feels like they, they feel demotivated, but with badges, they don't. Um, educator, I'll also ask, do we need them? Yes, um, they're very good for motivation, um, and they're a great way to balance. If you have to give grades, a lot of times not all your students will respond to that, but with a badge, you can make sure that you celebrate everyone because um, perhaps, because then you can celebrate their different achievements. So we're going to see how that works out. Um, and I really like what Charles Schwab says because I think in schools, a lot of times we, um, the systems are set up, and not necessarily teachers, but the system grading um, the way we give demerits. A lot of times we'll give badges for bad behavior, such as demerit um, or bad marks, we'll, uh, you know, but we hardly ever reward when someone just puts effort. And a lot of times there's many of our students who just want us to say every once in a while, I noticed you did this and I, I, think, that you, I think you did a great job at that. Or here, I want to celebrate that you accomplished this task. Here's a badge for it. And for a lot of students, especially like boys and um, and girls that don't ever really achieve much because a lot of times teachers and also the school kind of labels them as a bad kid, once they get that, it's hard to shake it off. But with a badge, they can show, they can wear a badge proudly and say, hey, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at coding or I'm really good at, um, I'm really good at making things. I'm really creative. I can crochet or I can bowl or I can play. So you can celebrate their different achievements. I think Educator Al gives a great example. Okay, so here's what it looks like. He uses something called 3D Game Lab. Now, 3D Game Lab was free for a while, and now all of a sudden they've decided not to be free, which is why I don't have them on here. Um, but the great thing about um, this is he shows you what he gives it for, so you can see the different ways. So Educator Al, he teaches science, and he teaches, um, I believe, eighth grade science. And so what he does is he has different badges. So first he has, if they read, um, he gives the badge. It's called readiness achieved, OK? Um, and then this is what they have to do. So the condition is what they have to do to receive this badge. They have to finish one of the orientation tests. So here he gives one for blogging. Um, he gives a student one for blogging. They can get that. Um, they can get one for being a scientific thinker, and then they finish, like, scientist activities. They can be a biome expert. They can be, so you can see different ones that he has here. He also has one for a traveler, a wanderer. He has one for um, a surgeon. So in your, as your subject is, and that's the kind of badges you want. We're going to see what this looks like. What's a digital badge look like? Well. Let's see first how teachers and students, because 
teachers use badges for the professional development. One of the ways they do it is they post it on their blog. Um, and Maria Bolsa just recently, she's the new, uh, the recent um, Ed Inspire um, for for um, the 30 Goals Challenge. And what she does is Maria Bolsa has put one of the reasons. Um, she has a great example, but her example is showing that in her blog, she is displaying on the right side so um, her badges. So she has a badge for Rotary, so she's showing membership. She is a member. She's also showing rank here. So um, at Simple K through 12, she's a, one of the highest ranked teachers there as um, an ambassador. Um, she's showing here, she's showing a badge for winning an award. She won an Ad Inspire Award. And then here she's showing a badge from Facebook because that is something that she's part of, like a location. So, and one of the great reasons if you go to this post is if you display, you might think that teachers are bragging, but actually displaying your badges shows others the communities that you are a part of. Um, and it also helps you build what's called a personal learning network or professional learning network. How does it do that? Well, I like this quote here from the Girl Scouts and it says here, uh, Juliet Lowe says, badges mark a certain achievement. When one girl sees a badge, and so you can see the badges of the Girl Scouts, um, on a Sister Scout's arm, if that girl has won the same badge, it awakens an interest and sympathy between them. So for example, on the next one um, with Maria, what what would you say, hey, I'm a member of that too? Well, we're all member, you know, many of us are members of Facebook. Um, if we're part of Simple K through 12 or we're a Rotary member, we may say, hey, Maria's in that. I want to read this blog more. So that's what she's trying to say. She's saying that all of a sudden, we want to get to know her more because of the badges that she displays. She's saying that she belongs to that community. Or we might be interested in joining that community too. We might say, wow, Simple K through 12 ambassador. That sounds kind of fun. Let's check that out. Or maybe we say, hey, Rotary, I want to go check that out. A lot of different events, not only conferences, but events. Um, and they're, so they're one way to get teachers to do things digitally. And of course, a certificate will do that as well. So for American TESO, you win a certificate. But who knows? We might be giving badges soon. So if you, we could give badges, for example, if you won, if you attended 50 webinars, then you might get like a super webinar badge, you know? So there's different types of badges that you could receive, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll discuss it and see. So different types of events, and they can be also physical events as well, or they can be online. So here, the connecteducators.org, they issue badges. Um, if you attend a professional development during this October month, then you can receive one of these badges. So here, if you go to, it tells you the purpose. This badge signifies the learner participated in this course, OK? They have them for different things. They have one for blogging. They have one for um, joining a community. I mean, they have different blogs for different achievements. It says your requirements. So when you're giving a badge, and you're giving it even to your students, or maybe you're, do any of you organize a camp? Do any of you organize an event? Um, like maybe you plan a conference, or maybe you plan an event for volunteering. You can even do it for charity, because it's not only teachers who use badges, but it's other professional uh, places as well. Badges are, are becoming very popular for that. It says the issuer. It says where you can learn more. And then it says um, Mozilla Firefox. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show, I mean, Mozilla Backpack Support. And I'll show you what that means, OK? So check your events. A lot of events will have them. Um, 
and then you can get one. They look good in your portfolio. And one of the reasons they look good in your portfolio is because if you have lots of badges, automatically, if you decide to put in an e-portfolio versus your blog, but automatically it tells the reader, but it also tells your director that you really care about your job. If they can scan that you have tons of these little badges, then they know this person is really dedicated to their field. They're dedicated to attending events in their field. Or to, that, you know, they can see all the things that you've done. One of the best platforms that I've discovered about it is MakeWaves. MakeWaves is free. It also offers a library of badges that you can give. You can choose badges from there to give, or you can make your own. The great thing is you make something. It's a social network. It looks like this, sort of like Facebook. So you have your profile, um, and then you can even blog and reflect about your stuff, which I think is awesome of make dot ways. I actually found out about this um, when I was in a conference, and I love this one. But the great thing about it is it doesn't. It has law students. It has people who create apps. It has developers, so it has all kinds of professions in it. You can even use this with your students. So um, that's something that you can consider if you decide to teach with badges. And when they achieve something, then they get the badge for it. It talks about different places and how they use badges, too. So Credly is another really good resource for badges. Um, Credly shows you how the New York Department of Education gives you an example. It, it, they use it to certify. So if you get on Credly, and that's free to join too, then you can get credit or certification if you're in the New York Department of Education. Um, EduCost here says that it um, validates the accomplishments of IT professionals. So in some cases, you can even get credit for a badge. Here, the Smithsonian gives digital badges for participation in education events. So even a museum is using badges to uh, so you can attend their events. Credly has these kind of tools. You just click on any of these, and you can easily create a badge that looks like this. Okay, So Credly gives you the tools if you want to give badges. The most popular badge resource and the free one, and the one that kind of started a lot of this, is actually Mozilla. Mozilla has, I don't think they're as user friendly as MakeWave and also as Credly. Those are the two easiest, best ones to use, in my opinion. They're super simple to use. And I mean for your professional development um, as a teacher. So. You can use Mozilla. That's what I use with my learners. Um, they give you things like coders. Coders can receive badges. They can even earn money from it if they receive so many badges. Um, this is They have really nice badges to choose from. It's a little complicated to get there, but you can, you can use these badges. That's a great thing about those three communities, you use badges. This is the way I used it with my students. So these are two of my students. And what we did was, I had too many tasks in my Moodle course the first time around. And so what I wanted to do <coughs> is I had to cut down the tasks. But we still wanted the students, it, you, you always have high achievers. So instead, we made them optional. And instead of receiving a grade, they'd receive a badge if they accomplished the task. Okay, and I'll show you what that kind of looks like in a little bit. But you can see my students, they tweeted it. And look, um, this one it says, I'm so happy I have my badge. And the next one says, my first badge. So you see how motivating it is? You see how excited they are to receive that? Uh-oh, what happened there? So this is kind of what it looks like. This is um, where they have, this is what the backpack looks like, the open badges. And so they put it here, and what it does is it says the name, the URL, and the badge details. It says who the issuer, the name. So this is my course, to just do a storytelling for teachers. That's the prof uh, I'm a professor in that course for the Ministry of Education in Spain. So they get, um, th so this was the badge that we made them. Um, I didn't make it, <laughs> but that was our badge. 
And they just finished the course. So when it tells them the description, it says what they did. Now they can have many of these. There are other platforms that also give badges for different things. One is called an estuary.com. Now, an estuary does work with Mozilla Backpack as well. So all of them tend to work with Mozilla. This is the thing about estuary. They have courses, and they're not free. So I, I do have to tell you that, that they're not free, the courses. Many of the platforms, OK, let's say you want to motivate students with badges, and you want them to accomplish tasks. Let's say, for example, that you want them to blog, but you don't necessarily want to grade it. Well, badge um, for accomplishing so many blogs and things, you can get badges for that. You can get badges every time they, um, for example, go above and beyond, help each other, tutor each other. So you can do citizenship badges, too. Um, there's many platforms, apps, and events that have them. So one of the best platforms to use, and I think, and it has badges. They're not the best looking, but they're good. Their badges are, um, is it Modo.com. And the great thing is if you connect with other teachers, you can use their badges that they have created. So you don't have to go and create your own. So you save tons of time that way. Um, the other place that has it is uh, Moodle. If you have Moodle 2.5, uh, I believe, or above, you can now give badges on Moodle. So it explains to you, I've already bookmarked all of these. I shared it in the Pearl Trees, and I'll, I'll do it again, but you'll find that. So this is what it looked like in my Moodle course. So what we did was um, we scattered them brief weekly missions. We made it into a mission. And if you make it sound fun, if you give them a mission every day um, or every week, and it's a manageable mission, and you make it sound like it's something cool, you know, um, then and you hype it up, then your students are going to be excited about accomplishing it. And that's what we want them to do. We want them to accomplish, to go and do more. So you can get badges for when they accomplish homework as well. Um, here, so this is an idea. So for example, we created a mission. So here, the mayor is, is ridding the city of Grispeedy unless he's convinced it's art. So this is your student's mission. Let's say they're teens or they can even be um, in college. Um, OK, so their task, their mission is snap photos of graffiti they want to make, of, they want to keep in the city and make a strong argument to the mayor of why the mayor should not take it out. Now, if they do that, then the badge they can receive is an art critic. This is what the badge looks like. Well, art leader. And this one I got from MakeWave. So MakeWave has a huge library of different badges that you can, um, you can, you can send to others. You can also make your own badges. And one of the easiest tools is classbadges.com. Um, I actually think Credly, um, the one I showed earlier, was uh, is much user more user friendly. So I like that one a lot more. Um, but class badges is good, and a lot of people like them. And these are all free to sign up for, by the way. I thought this was really good, so now I'm going to show you some other cool sites, and then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up, OK? So we have badgebingo.com. If you go to an event, you have the ability to kind of do it as a competition. Um, you can play person to person. Um, badge bingo is like who ha who can get like the most badges and the different ones first. Sort of like when you're playing bingo and they call it out. So if you do this all digitally, so this could be a fun way to attend events. Now they do this for all kinds of things. It's not only for learning at a conference, but they'll do it for all kinds of different events. And when you're using badges, not only to accomplish a task, so yes, we want to do things. If you think about the Cub Scouts, for example, they get a badge for learning how to administer first aid. So they might get, for example, a first aid badge. Um, but the other part of it, too, is if they help each other. So if you want your students, um, celebrate things like this. And when you start giving badges, if your students know they can get a badge for being on time to your class and sitting down.
for one for five days and they become the then you can manage behavior that way really well. Um, if your students know they can get a badge for helping others in your class, then they and, and it's not a thing about rewarding. What it is is it's them showing patches and it's you saying, hey, I recognize that you helped Molly out. So I'm gonna give you a badge to to so you can so we can celebrate this. So we can celebrate when someone does something really good in our class. So this is what we want to do. Badges aren't about rewards. They are about celebrating. And if you celebrate the best things that you want of your students, then that student becomes a model for the rest of the students. And if you have plenty of badge opportunities, then all of your students realize that they can be they can achieve a badge. They can they can do something and, and they can have that badge and they can display it. They can join like mate.wave S um, and they can actually display their badges and they can even reflect in their blog about them and their experience um, achieving that badge. So I hope this helped you. I hope this inspired you. You can find plenty of resources if you go to the Pearl Trees. Um, and let me go ahead and get that for you, so that way you can have that. Um, and I hope you have a great uh, uh, weekend, and thank you so much for attending. Um, I really hope that all of this helped you as well. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, and we will see you next week when we talk about things you can do around the school ground. So it's not going to be about necessarily digital. Um, but it's going to be if you happen to be running a story, uh, a camp, um, in in an English camp or anything like that, like ways your students can learn, and they don't even have to.